All right, let's take a look here on the chat. Maybe you could just type back these other videos. For some reason, I can't get these other links. All right, let's see what we got, Jerry. Hey, everybody. We only got 29 minutes and uh, 27 more seconds. So video tip of the week. I uh, had a client, corporate client this week, sent our strategy to video. CEO loved it, shared it with the team. Uh, we all know that the PowerPoint and uh, the way we communicate with people is getting lost sometimes when you write in an email. So we thought, let's just do it in a, in a video and save some time. Anything you want to add? That's about it. It was video is the way to fly, even in proposals. All right. Thanks so much. A video about video. That's very good. Very meta, very inception. I'd say two things about that. One is the sound is going to be very key. And you want to buy a road video, or, or, or sorry, a road wireless go mic. And that is the one I just literally interviewed Sean Collins using it. I think I might have left it in the rental car. We pushed the earth too far. Oops. This is Vimeo doing this kind of stuff. But the key is you, you want you want some kind of mic that either it's a wired mic or a wireless mic that will tie in with with your phone. And oftentimes it's going to be noisy. We're in a restaurant. We're catching people at an event, and the, the sound is is going to be so key. And you don't you can't really edit that in sound in, in post if your sound's not good. Not people will say, oh, we'll fix it in post, but. It's really kind of hard to do. And that being said, you filmed in a relatively quiet environment, but try to go for better sound. And then number two is with that video, see if you can film a version of it that is vertical. Now with, with landscape, it's okay if you've got two people, but if you, if you can find a way, if you're filming in 4K, it's actually easy to cut that landscape back to vertical or to square. And that way with square, you can go across every single channel. So that's good. Keep making more of those. You're teaching by example, saying video is the best way to relate, especially short little videos. That's obviously very powerful. So keep doing that. Great job. Let's see. We've got, oh, here we go. Now I see these. You're coming. Let's go to, look at Harold's Instagram. Okay. 101 views. I'll follow you for that. So captions? last month in China, I had dinner with a Chinese billionaire, a guy who has built a multi-billion yuan company and sold it as the majority shareholder. And I met him years ago, right after he had completed this transaction. And at that time, he was only 46 years old. And so I know him really well. We've spent a lot of time together. And this time we visited for about three hours. And he was telling me how he is doing the exact same thing with a completely different company in a completely different industry. And so it really, really spoke to me and it just goes to show the importance of, and he's like this, of being task oriented. We all have ideas on a daily basis, but then there are those of us who are disciplined and have set an incredible habitual lifestyle to where when they have ideas, they just plug that right into a system and whatever tasks that arise from those ideas, they're going to get done because of the discipline and lifestyle that they have. The other thing that's incredible about this man is that he's also a phenomenal husband and father. So it just goes to show you don't have to sacrifice your family. So last month in China, this is great. Harold, I give you an A. The sound is fantastic. You've got a great hook with, you know, dinner with a billionaire. Who doesn't want to hear what happened with the billionaire? But there's a couple things. One is, imagine if you could just put some text here. People don't read the captions on Instagram. And it says, dinner with a billionaire or something where you have billionaire in there without violating 20% text. And then number two, you're kind of leading people on, on, well, what did the billionaire talk about? And which was a Jack Ma or who is it? Or why were you hanging out with him? So you could put in just a little bit of detail if you can without giving away, you know, private details, right? If it's a close friend or what the circumstances are, if you're willing to reveal it. And another thing that you could do, this is great as a first step, adding B-roll that has pictures of you with this person, if you can do that. Or other things that, that demonstrate taking initiative or action or other things tied to this particular video to make it even better. But so far, this looks great, right? You've got 101 views. But imagine if you could get more likes, shares, and comments. And imagine, you know, if you were to boost this as well. It looks like this is what, 20 weeks, 19 weeks old. So I think this thing could have some legs 
Oh, actually, the, the fourth thing is you could also post it from your public figure page. So if this is coming from the King group, that's good. But imagine if, if it was from you, Harold. That would be way more personal because then you could show that, oh, good, you got a lot of these other ones with you. You got good lighting, whatever you've done for the setup, this looks fantastic. The car videos normally are pretty good. But imagine if you got a lot more reach on this. Excellent. Let's see what else we've got. Mitch has got a ton of stuff. Let's see what we got here. LinkedIn. I love seeing videos on LinkedIn. You guys probably saw I made a post on LinkedIn that got 60,000 views just in the last couple of days, just organic. Let's see, what do we have here? Can SEO save you $5,000 a month? Okay. Oh, search engine optimization class here at IRSC, Indian River State College. Um, it was awesome. Great questions from everybody on how to rank that website better. And by the way, the big red bus in the back, it's about giving blood. You guys need to give blood. It's really healthy. Um, so you need to do that because a month for it. It's been over eight weeks. So um but seo super important rank your business better because if you guys rank they know what to pay for ads and ads are super duper make sure i don't get hit by a car super duper expensive and we had a client we we're managing it was five thousand dollars a month for their online ads if they ranked good they wouldn't have to spend five thousand dollars on ads so it's actually a better investment if you invest in your ranking and they don't have to pay for ads anymore all right um that's all i got for you give blood all right talk to you later see now that's good that works on any channel he filmed it vertically he spoke to the camera, he was engaging, he was walking. And when you're walking, that gives visual reset to the background. It helps people. Even help you speak too. I find that when walking, like I go and walk with friends, I'm more thoughtful. So this is fantastic. A couple things that you might do, consider reversing the order of what you have here. Some of this is stream of thought, which is okay. It helps people identify with you. But imagine if you started with, let me tell you about how I saved a client $5,000 a month. So you can tell in the beginning you're kind of warming up and here at the end is where you're making the point. Imagine if you started here as a hook, right? In the first three or four seconds to get their attention and then you're able to go into these other pieces. And the give blood thing is sort of contextual. You might even have that as another video. I think around here is where you make the point. They wouldn't have to spend $5,000 on ads. So it's actually a better investment if you invest in your ranking and they don't have to pay for ads anymore. See, that's your, that's your hook right there. So you could take this through Apple Clips or have a VA or Fiverr. Re, it just very simply just cut the order of this. Start with the hook, then it shows this and it has your lower thirds here in the bottom and maybe some other tips about SEO and then you can give context as, as to what you're doing or you just came from a meeting and you're about to give blood or something else like that. But this is fantastic. You put a couple hashtags which may or may not work on LinkedIn. I think over time we'll see about that. LinkedIn's pushing it but we'll see here let me show you my notifications for example look at this post that i made now this one is on purely text so try varying things sometimes you make the one minute video sometimes it's just text so you can see this post is just text one-liners this is called the this is called broetry where it's just one line at a time as a sentence and it's gotten 60,000 views, almost 1,000 likes. And the reason why it did is because, and it's the same thing you're, you're gonna do when you're telling your stories, Mitch and other folks. You start with a hook. So notice what I did here. Some random guy hit me up for free consulting, so I stopped what I was doing and gave him five minutes of help on the spot. Like, oh, okay. But then he kept asking more questions. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. And so it, we, we bring you in with the first, sentence has to drive their attention because if you here i'll just show you let's go to my feed and you'll see that you see okay here's marcus murphy from dm 18 years ago i graduated from college okay a few months ago i was invited back to speak to the entire high school and then it's see more do i want after that second line and depending on where this breaks is that enough to capture my attention based on these first two sentences maybe maybe not but because he's relatively big on LinkedIn, because he teaches on LinkedIn, you'll see he's already gotten a little bit of traction. Let's see what, what's going on here with this ad, same thing. See what your company can accomplish when IT is set free from the laptops and take ages to start. That's not enough to get me to want to keep watching and therefore this one's not doing too well. John Miller, founder of Engageo and also Marketo. Marketo was a client for a while. Now see where this is cut off? He's made this so long as a single block, no one's gonna to wanna to read this whole thing. So even though he has super high IQ, very, very intelligent content, 
people don't want to click on see more and the image is not specific enough to capture my attention. So think about how important it is in the first three seconds to capture their attention. So before you press the red button to record, what is it that's going to be the hook in the first three seconds that's going to get their attention? Think about that and then you can segue into the other pieces that you have. All right, what do we have here? Joel, Joe, do we look at this one? Don't run ads and be a loser. Okay, four days ago, what do we got? Started meeting with some clients today. Let's restart that. What's going on, guys? Beautiful day out here, getting started. Meeting with some clients today about digital ads. First thing I want to emphasize is when you're doing ads, you really want to make sure that you're capturing the right audience for the right campaign. You don't want to just blurt out stuff and put things out there because what you end up doing is marketing for the competition. And that's really the wrong way to go. So before you do an ad campaign, find out who your customer is. Find out what your buyer persona is so that you can accurately target them and in your business to grow. That's good. Joe, you're personable. You look in the camera, you're holding the camera at face level. The lighting is solid. The sound is good because you're holding it close to you. Most people don't want to hold the phone that close to them because they're sensitive about that. You are natural. This is great. Now do more of these. This is 30 seconds. You could even just clip this and make it a 15 second story and cross post it to Instagram and Facebook. The Subject line here could potentially be off-putting. Don't run ads and be a loser. Some want to run ads and whole, you know, don't be a loser thing could, you know, could potentially put people in a bucket to be named. So you want to be careful of downselling or using any kind of derogative content. It could work, right? Because you could say there, there's different ways that you could do it. You just have to be careful. And if this is part of your personality, that that's okay too. But overall, this is a very good video. Let's see what else we got. Joel's got a second one. Well, let's see. A few pieces of content. We'll just choose this first one. I love how you guys are posting on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where you're going to get the most reach compared to all the other networks. Be your own boss is one of the worst reasons to become an entrepreneur ever. Okay, that's a good intro. I would, and then that would show the see more right after here. While it's often said with good intention, the reason a business exists is not to give you a feeling of empowerment or to solve your self-esteem problems. A business exists to solve a problem. An entrepreneur is a person who sees a need not being served and every bone in their body can't be happy until they solve it. An entrepreneur should care more about empowering others. Your employees first and your customers are close second. Your needs are secondary serving others. Check it out. Most of the people telling you to be your own boss are financially benefiting from you directly or perpetuating the belief they're holding on to. And that's not said with judgment. It's really the reality you can observe on social realities and ego and business will kill you. If you're in business to be the boss, blah, blah, blah. But because that manager you hated that boss that didn't respect you, they are the bosses. Yep, now you have even more bosses. Get in the business to serve a need. So that's good. You can see people are reacting to it and he is replying. Even it's, if it's positive or negative, you still want to reply. He's replying to all of them. That is great. Wow, it's, it's these sorts of things, especially on LinkedIn about entrepreneurship, about why you're in business, about struggles that you have work really well on LinkedIn. And now you're getting a little social proof. Now each of these things where I'm clicking like is generating a notification for Michael. So one way you could make this even stronger, and this is still very good, Oh, look, it's three weeks ago, still works, is, in fact, let's connect here. Anytime I see someone that I think is good, I just want to connect. So you should add a note most times, but you know who I am. To make it even stronger, because this is bro a tree where you've had this one line at a time here. This is what I was just showing you. Start with a situation. So what was it that caused you to say that? It was because you just came out of a meeting. It's because you're coaching somebody where, he said, you know, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm quitting this corporate job because I want to be my own boss. And you need some kind of way to, I would recommend starting with some kind of story. So it creates empathy and people can identify with the situation. If you go straight into teaching a concept, it could come off as being didactic, as in you're preaching at people. I'm not saying you're doing that here, but it's going to be stronger if you start with a story. Okay. So let's see what else we've got here. There's one more, Dennis, uh, from Darlene. I just popped it in the chat there. 
Okay. So the top then let's here. see. Uh, no, scroll all the way down. I okay. just popped in there from, yeah, right there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And then let's see who's the winner of that Facebook shirt. <laughs> all right. <laughs> COVID-19 has some of us stalled. We send prayers to all who are ill. A speedy recovery. If your business is slowing down, use this downtime to re reevaluate your business, work on your business versus in your business. Check out our marketing report card. All right. $49 gets ABCDF ratings. Use times wisely. And video. One minute video. It's all taking a moment to pause. So this is a perfect time for us to start working on our business instead of in our business. And this is a great time to evaluate how you are running your marketing and is your marketing working for your business and to fix those problems that you have with your marketing efforts. I want you to check out our marketing report card. It's going to grade you on your online presence. You're going to get an A, B, C, D, F rating. We're going to give you videos and telling you what you need to do to fix any issues that we find. It's going to focus on social media, how much you're spending in ad spend compared to your competition, things that are broken on your website, and things you need to fix with your online business listings. It's a great report card to really look at the things you need to start doing, stop doing, and keep doing with your marketing efforts. Let's get going and take advantage of this time wisely. That's good. So Darlene, I'd give that an A minus. You have started with the hook, coronavirus. And the market card. If you want to admit a plus, consider holding up a printed copy of the report card. Consider telling a little bit of a story on something that you saw. Like I was at the supermarket yesterday and the shelves were completely empty of toilet paper and people were going around like it was the end of the world. And, or you could say, you know, we were planning on going on a cruise tomorrow or to the amusement park and it got shut down. And that way you're able to, to personalize it. Because if you say this, even though it's true, like you were sending prayers to everybody, we were wishing, wishing you well, that's something that could potentially come off as being just sort of bland, right? So if you can personalize it, then you're able to say things like, you know, this is a great opportunity to be able to work on your business while we have more downtime right so if you are not getting as many customers then why let this thing spiral and avalanche into something else that's that could be worse right you don't want to fear monger but at the same time you want to have a clear tie from okay so here's what's going on with coronavirus now you need to buy our marketing report well you want you don't you don't want to make it look like you're being opportunistic. You want to make it sound like, Darlene, you're having coffee with a friend and saying, "Hey, I was thinking, you know, this thing happened to me, and I've got a, a lot of clients where they're asking me, what should I do with coronavirus? And what I think you should do is let this is a great time to see how you're doing in six categories. And a lot of businesses are going to be weakened by this. My clients are telling me this. And I want to help you. And there's six areas that I want to score your business on. And here's the report. Here's what it looks like. Here's why this is important. And then you're able to be specific. I mean, I guess you're saying this here, social media efforts, accuracy, the website, these kinds of things. But think about how you can do this in a way that doesn't quite look like you're selling and it looks more like a recommendation from a friend. Does that make sense? Because when you, when you have this, you, you see you've got three exclamation points in a row. That looks like you're selling. And then with the Bitly link, which you're using for tracking, you, you don't want to use a Bitly link because then people are wondering, where does it resolve to, right? You want to, you want to use these things direct. So just put this thing direct and inside your Google Analytics, you can see that it came from LinkedIn, right? And then here on the landing page, if I just got a personal message from Darlene, then it should be a picture or video of Darlene saying, hey, Darlene here again, I want to help you identify where you have things that need to be fixed and where you have opportunities to be able to grow your local business. It is a special for only $49. I'm going to cover these six areas. Now imagine that video is right up here in the top. Wouldn't that be so much better? Imagine you watch this thing, Darlene makes her plea. Then you come here, you see that going on. And then she could post that on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, right? All these different versions and all of them can drive here. 
she doesn't even have to wear the same shirt. It just needs to be Darlene to Darlene, right? Because Darlene's the figurehead about this. I'm sure we go to about, we connect, that's cool. And I need to see a little bit more. What is this guy dancing? Is that your business partner? Or is that like somebody like stock art or something? Or somebody holding a this thing with their phone? What is that? We should see Darlene. This woman stepping through the mirror, right? Let's let's have Darlene here, right? If I'm gonna get stuff done, I need to know that that I trust Darlene and I, I believe in Darlene. It's all about Darlene, right? Was, Darlene's great. Why wouldn't we show more of Darlene? <laughs> all right. That's great feedback, Dennis. Uh, thanks for going over the vi those videos. I know it's delivering a lot of value for everybody on the call, understanding uh, you know, how to improve some of these strategies. So, you know, before we get into, you know, I think that a lot of our partners here would like would love to hear from you the opportunities that you see with what's going on right now. Yeah. Who would you say gets that Facebook shirt? Who would you say would get that Facebook shirt out of what what we what we ran through? A lot of great, lot of great, uh, great posts. But yeah. who would you wear that that shirt to? Man, this is one of those tough decisions. It's like, uh, what's your favorite Michael Bolton song? <laughs> uh, I, I think I'll give it to Michael here because I see that he's prolific. You guys are all doing a great job. You're all writing great content. I see there's engagement here, even if it's re-engagement on content that's before or from a while ago. The the thing I like most about here is that he's applied to everybody. And that is what drives the engagement. So if you're wondering why you're not getting the kinds of likes, comments, and shares that he's getting, it's because he's replying to everybody. Awesome. And he's telling some stories along the way, right? You guys are all doing great. It's not like, the, you know, this is a hard one. But yeah, Michael, are you a medium? What size are you? Uh, small, uh, maybe a medium if it's a tight fit, but typically okay. a small. Okay. And there's a good <laughs> chance. A medium. <laughs> okay. There's a good chance I'm going to be in Saskatoon with Vendasta in the next week or so. So we might even just bring this shirt here and a bunch of shirts and mail it out to you guys. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Uh, by the yeah. way, the story behind it, uh, it was actually, uh, it was a multi-level marketing uh, rant that I had to, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to disguise it a little bit, but uh, I, but it's really that mindset that it's people taking advantage of people yeah. by mm -hmm. using like an enticement in that. So, but thank you. That's great, Michael. Yeah. So Dennis, uh, yeah, let's get into it here with about 20 minutes left in the meeting. Um, you know, I don't know what you had planned today, but I know that, uh, you know, we'd love to hear your take on um, the opportunities that you see with what's going on, uh, you know, in the market right now. Yeah. yeah. So in lieu of our reg regularly scheduled programming, I want to talk about coronavirus and what this means for us to be able to do something this week and in the coming months and what that means. So you may see that, for example, let's go to my Facebook profile because we'd like to teach from direct example. And I was just at Digital Marketer Headquarters an hour and a half ago, filmed a whole day here. This is actually in the office right, after we did this. I to tell you what we are doing about this. We're making a ton of training videos. You can see I'm here at DM. We just filmed a full day workshop here. And maybe if you're not teaching workshops, you can still share your knowledge. You can still meet with clients. That's why Zoom stock has literally been Zooming. Think about the knowledge that you have and using this opportunity with conferences being canceled, with big events being canceled, to take advantage of that big surge of traffic online. I think that the cost of traffic on YouTube, Facebook, Google, and these other places is going to go down because there's more traffic with less people that are buying it. I think people have, are not spending as much. So you just give your assessment of what it means for your industry, for your customer base, for your lighthouse. If you built your lighthouse already, maybe the lighthouse is businesses in Portland, Oregon, or it could be chiropractors or whatever your lighthouse is, start making videos about what this means. And then the angle that you want to use is so key. The way you say it is key. So instead of coming off as preachy, or coming off as repeating the news from someone else, the way you have the highest authority is you make it like you're giving friend to friend level feedback, right? So instead of like, I'm trying to sell you on buying my reports, of course we want them to buy snapshot reports. Of course we want them to buy services, but do it in such a way 
that it feels more gentle. Let me show you what that means. So I just got back half an hour ago, not even, having lunch with my buddy, Sean Collins. Sean Collins is the founder of Affiliate Summit. Those of you guys who do online marketing know that he runs one of the largest conferences on the planet. And we just got tacos here in Austin and I pulled out my phone and this is what happened. Hey Sean, tell me about your first car as an escort. Uh, see if this shows up properly. Let me fast forward a little bit here. And I asked him, what does coronavirus mean for him as a conference organizer? And what's he gonna do about this? Too fast, they saw that in the last time this week, so and it's gonna be half the crowd of usual, so it's some couple thousand people I'll be hanging out with Robert Space and and um Robert else is freaking out and, and just binge watching and eating crackers in their house, I'll be off the Bahamas on the beach. So why not? I like that anyway. You gotta live. I and part of my my fact though is that I lived in I lived in New York City first by eleven and I live in New Jersey and I um I was a best of case for a year. I I just wasn't enjoying life, I was miserable. And um yeah, life's too short. I I'm not gonna so he's, he's telling stories. He's telling us, hey, I run conferences that have 10,000 plus people. And even though a lot of things are being shut down, I'm going on a cruise tomorrow because I'm reasonably healthy and life is short and I've got a new girlfriend. And here's if I'm a conference organizer and, and this is and I say, what advice do you have for other conference organizers? Move stuff online. Make sure you handle refunds properly because you're going to make these the, the, the sponsors angry instead of just getting this for next year. What does it mean for South by Southwest? What about restaurants that are in town? How are they handling? How about, you know, hotels, right? We're, we're staying here in the Grand Duca suite, which is a nice suite here at a hotel that normally would be full and one of the hardest hotels to get into. But we got a super, super cheap deal here. And there's certain, you know, what could they do to try to fill the rooms here? What could they do with online marketing to be able to be stronger now because they, they got to compete for all these kinds of dollars there's so many different angles that you can have now if you haven't done a webinar like what we're doing here if you've not put together courses if a lot of this stuff is relatively new and it is for most people because you have to start with making these 15 second videos one minute videos i want to show you what that framework looks like and there's two things i want to show you today one is Think about everything that you do as being a course. And a lot of people think a course needs to be this giant textbook that's 300 pages and 12 one hour lessons and things like that. A, co a course is nothing more than a sequence of items that you can continue to add to. Now, if you wanna do things fully blown out, then you'd create a project, you'd build landing pages, a list of lessons and topics, you'd film it properly. There's other things that would be tied to that to be able to build a full course, like you know having email sequences, charging for it, having courses that are in different sequences, having a freemium that leads to something that like services and whatnot. But if you merely think about the components, the initial components of what you need to teach a course, it's nothing more than tying strategy to checklists. And this is gonna be key for us as Vendasta partners because here, I'll show you why. This is inception, right? You know, it's the dream inside the dream inside the dream. Think about this. So strategy. Strategy is our goals, content, and targeting. That's our X, Y, and Z that we talked about in earlier sessions here at the Think Tank. It's what we stand for. It is helping people understand our stories because behind every why story, there is some kind of meaning. Like Michael's, hey, be your own boss. Okay, well, let me dissect what that really means and how that ties back to my values. So every time I tell a story, it can be a 15 second story, I'm really using that dog whistle level frequency, right? The, the dog whistle is the one that only certain people can hear that frequency. And then I break it down into a little piece of knowledge, a little nugget about concepts, uh, like some kind of tip on here's how I'm preparing for the next month. I'm buying lots of canned food and guns and toilet paper because I think that things will get shut down where I live, okay? And therefore, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's the checklist. So this is a natural way to sequence into selling. So if, if I'm talking about, wow, small businesses are really struggling right now. And I witnessed this one thing happen. I, true story, I was at HEB yesterday and people were literally going mad over the toilet paper. 
And then I saw videos of other people, friends of mine that were posting saying they were out of toilet paper and how dare me try to, you know, hoard toilets here. I'll just I'll literally show you this in action. Okay. So I posted on Facebook. Let's see. I just, let's go to my two posts ago. I post maybe twice a day. So you saw I posted an hour ago saying, here's what I'm doing in Austin. And then, okay, someone, someone tagged me in this one thing. Okay, let me go back. Okay, yesterday, look at this. I just bought five giant rolls of whatever, things of toilet paper, am I crazy, right? And look at all these people that are commenting. Wipe carefully, yes. Oh, you're contributing to the problem. You know, why are you doing all this when other people, now you're making it so other people can't buy toilet paper. Do you have diarrhea? Then someone says, your the shelf life on toilet paper is only 10 hour, or ten months. I'm like, no, it's not. It's like years long, right? You can see all the funny things that people are saying. And this is all giving me feedback on the kinds of things that I could say. Look at this. is funny. What is this? Can you see this? When you defeat all the toilet paper hoarders and meet the final boss. It's like you have something. What's that? Someone's talking. All right. So you can see I'm driving engagement. And then from here, this is a great opportunity because I'm this is lightweight. I'm just saying, hey, do you, I'm, I'm not selling anything. I'm just merely making some kind of statement. I'm asking for feedback. I'm listening. And then from here, I could say, here's, here's other things that you need to do to be prepared, right? If you have kids, if they're being pulled out of school, if you're spending more time at home, here's things. And the way to work for small businesses is right, you start with some story. You talk about the why. This is basically why, how, and what. Talk about, um, you know, tips on what, just one or two tips, not a whole course necessarily. And then the checklist is what you need to do. So if as part of the snapshot report or your small business scorecard or whatever you want to call it, it's to fix your site speed. It's to get more blog posts up. It's to get more social. It's to do stuff with your reviews. That naturally leads to here's things you need to do and thus we need to talk run a report and then you need to buy these services so if you put your content out there in the right way it's always moving from strategy to concepts to checklists you follow me on that and same thing you take any topic and you could break it down into the why how and what so why do you want to do it what, what's the benefit you're going to get how are you doing it you're sharing a little bit of knowledge and then what do you need to do well I need to claim my listing. I need to do these things in Google My Business. I need to run a Facebook ad. I need to show who I am and, and do 15 second selfie videos. Or I need to get proper lighting and, and use one of these ring lights, right? You're telling people what to do. But if you go straight to telling people what to do and you don't tell them more about the how, which is conceptual, and you don't give them the why where you're connecting with them personally, it's going to come off as selling if you go straight to the what. So here's all these other components of how you're able to sequence these items together. This is how we happen to build a bunch of these courses. And you're going to see more of these that come through Conquer Local. And you're going to see as you're collecting more content and you put it in your content library, you're going to be able to reuse different components of these, different stories that you have with other people that have been collected over the years, your brand, your relationships, the people that you know that are personal and professional that tie into these topics that then tie into you growing your agency because people buy based on who you are they don't buy based on the you know vendasta services that kind of thing you know white labeling is great but they're really buying you so what i taught yesterday was the same kind of thing a full day course i start off by telling a story so me and the queen have you ever been with the king and queen of another country a small country like malaysia but they're still you know she's worth 22 billion dollars right so still a big deal and i told the story about how I messed up because I got full at our dinner after 45 minutes and the dinner went from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. And I realized I offended her because I she looked at me and noticed I wasn't eating and I went, oh crap, you didn't, you know, I, no one told me, I thought this dinner would last for like an hour or two, it went all night. And then we sang karaoke and all that. And so I'm telling a story and then people wanna know, well, how did you get with the queen and what did you do and what happened and what's it like? And, and it's just a great way to have a hook, right? People I empathize with you because you show vulnerability by saying, wow, I didn't know how to dress and behave and how to act in a Muslim country and, you know, all this. You tell it through one minute videos and why, how, and what, X, Y, Z, like we talked about. You get these videos edited, which is going to be another session we'll talk about here in Think Tank. And then you start hiring 
other people using the money that you're making from these clients to then fund what you're doing with arbitrage so that they're handling any kind of document stuff. Of course, you can use the business center and the partner center to handle some of these mechanics, but you still have to handle client mechanics to make sure they're happy, you know, this kind of thing. So this is the whole thing that we taught yesterday that people paid a lot of money to come see a digital marketer. And it's the same thing that we especially need to do now. Why? Because there's way more opportunity to be able to share people in a, how can I say this? I don't want to say a hysteria environment, but there people are agitated. And this is good for all of us to be able to put out more information so there's less fear. Fear happens only in the absence of information. So let's be the voices of reason. Let's teach the things that are working. Let's start doing our own little webinars and going live. Let's start posting these things that, as we see here, you know, on LinkedIn cross post them to our website, to Facebook, and then other businesses, I think that because they're gonna be struggling or because they're, they're afraid they're about to be struggling, they're gonna be more likely to come to us, right? Not because we're scaring, but because we're taking advantage of the fact that right now more people are gonna be spending time at home, online, and maybe their, their ads are not as effective. The reason why people buy toilet paper is because it creates a sense of comfort that you have that, you know, if everything goes bad, at least you can wipe your butt, right? And why would you hoard, what does toilet paper have to do with coronavirus? Nothing, right? And bottled water, you're, unless the, the water system gets screwed up, you can still use, the, you know, the water in your area is very good, right? You're, you're talking about these things and, and you're interviewing other people about what do they think? And if you have a lighthouse, you interview the lighthouse and you ask them, hey, what should we do about coronavirus? And then you create an article, 10 tips, 10 ways on how you need to do this, this, and this, right? And the reason why I ask questions on Facebook and LinkedIn and whatnot is because these people are doing the work for me. They're giving me the ideas and the tips and all this. And, you know, look, these people are literally, like, I literally made, how long do you think it took me to write this post? Mm, 30 seconds? Look at how much content. I got off of this, right? You have all this content and now I can recycle this into stuff that I turn into blog posts and LinkedIn and Facebook and all this. This is, you know, driving leads. All these people are coming in and they'll, they'll message you. The more content you put out there, the more people are going to come your way. So here's what happened here. Hey, I took your course five, four or five years ago. Now I saw your thing on Lab Elite and here are all the, you know, now these people are, now it's generating business. This guy, look, what did he do? He came, oh, he just sold his company for $10 million. Exited, moved to Austin. Great meeting you and sharing your knowledge. And I said, great, we should, we should, you know, hang out. I'm like, okay, I'll take you out for a drink and to eat. I'm like, oh, send me an email. There it is, right? So, and the reason why I get this, and look, I get probably 30 of these connection requests every day. I, I never go out there except just now, as you saw, make connection requests because these people come in and they, the more, con the more people see you, the more they are going to, oh, by the way, stuff like this, you know, this is lead gen. I'm going to ignore that, right? The more they want to connect with you. And that's the beauty when you get inbound, when you have the topic wheel and the lighthouse, coronavirus is just another opportunity for people to talk about stuff. So you want to be part of that conversation, not in an opportunistic news checking kind of way, but it, like, do you notice that? Like when you go to your news, it's just like coronavirus, this coronavirus, that that's what they're talking about. Then talk about it, but in an intelligent way that features the lighthouse that, that you have. Right. And, and look at literally look at what's happening on Twitter, LinkedIn, Quora. It is an absolute field day. And this I'm not trying to take advantage, but in a bad way, but this is growing my brand. Look, here's Ryan Dice. He said this two years or two hours ago. You're a little freaked out. This is scary. We announced postponing our big event. How about you? What are you going to do? And I'm going to reply on that. And I'm going to say, I'm more concerned about the reaction about, sorry, about the snowballing effects of fear 
than the actual number of people getting sick. People getting sick, not suck sick. And these other people are going to see this, and I might come in and participate in this conversation, right? And I'll say to Derek, I agree. Right? I'm just participating in the conversation. And then I might do that across my other pages. Now, this is my page, not my profile. I can do it on the Blitz Metrics page. I can boost a post. I can take the interview that I just had with Sean Collins and say, this is what Sean Collins has to say about this and this. And I can then take that and cross post it over here. You see what I'm doing? So that's what I wanna leave with you guys today. Look at how whenever there's an opportunity, something that's going on, you can be a part of this conversation in an intelligent way, you're adding value and you're growing your inbound lead gen at the same time, right? Okay, we've got a couple minutes left. Love to hear what you guys think. And then we'll assign a homework assignment. Let me know, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? What are you gonna do about coronavirus? Or how about this? Do you want to, are, are you comfortable with making some posts or maybe even doing a little webinar on what coronavirus means for X, where that's your target base and what you need to do about it. And if the answer is not yes, then what's holding you back? What do you need? And then while you're doing that, let's take a look here. Michael says, do you find there's value in having higher production value photos for a lot of these strategies? Yes, you wanna mix some of that in as part of, from your content library as B-roll, but don't let that stop you from just making stuff where your hair is not perfect, you're in a hotel room, there's a maid walking around in the back, you see, right? Just put the stuff out there now. Later, you can put in your high power videos and photos. Or if you have the option for higher production video to mix it up, photos and videos, yeah, use a combination of that. All right, what do you guys say here? Tell me, tell me, do you wanna do that? What do you think of the strategy of coronavirus? Janice, uh, Jana, sorry. Appreciate the virus talk. We have two clients now who want to jump on getting more business in light of the fact that people are self-isolating. That's, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Julie, already did a couple of blog posts and comparison posts. Oh, good. E-friend marketing. Wes says, I like the idea about position the coronavirus as a way to, to focus on your business. Yeah, businesses are slowing down. SMBs, they need to help with digital creatures. Let's look at what Julie has. Then we got to run in a minute. But the homework assignment is make some content a video ideally that you post on LinkedIn or your website or YouTube, and then cross post that to all these other sites so you can get maximum ROI on that. You wanna get more value, run it through Fiverr like we're showing or through your virtual assistant. Nobody wants to spread germs. This is good. Now imagine you turn this into a video, right? So now you got some stock art, the germs, the person coughing, but imagine how much more powerful would this be Julie, if you made a one minute video, they connect with you. They're more likely to buy from you when they connect with you. Okay, on it. Yeah, good job, Julie. That's awesome. All right, any other, love to hear, what do you guys, this is a great opportunity for all of us, not as marketers to you know, uh, sabotage and plunge, you know, pillage, but, but to actually help other people out because there's so much misinformation. Harold, you got a question? We might have one more minute for a question if you pop it in there quickly. This is great. Yeah, I know this is a little bit off the wall, but I also have heard videos where you speak Mandarin a little bit. Well, yeah, sure, uh, Jolin. Great, John. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so so what I want to know, is I feel like it helps my brand so much yeah. having worked so much in China and knowing the country so well. Yeah. And um, my question for you is, I'd like to start doing posts with English subtitles with Chinese subtitles underneath Good. them. That's a great yeah. idea. Tell me another thing that makes you unique. Anytime you have an angle, take it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Awesome. So the homework this week is, uh, let's just hear it again, Dennis. What's the homework this week? Make a video about what coronavirus means for X. Remember XYZ, X is who you serve. And, and if you don't know what the structure should be, say, uh, start with a story, a one minute story about something that you observe to make it personal to you. Then uh, mention what is it that uh, they, they need to do as a result of this, and then um, why, or you know, what's your long-term forecast, you know, next month or two about what's going to happen. And that way people can identify with you, and then at the end, call to action, reach out, talk to me, I'm here to help, 
if you're out of toilet paper, let me know and I'll send you some, right? Just make it kind of lightweight, funny, show that you care. So make that video and post it, share it here in the group. Let's look at it next week. Let's see who gets the most traffic, right? Whoever gets the most traffic, let's yeah. send them. What do you say? Sound good? Say reply yes in the chat if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense, uh, reply with a question mark or, or ask why. I love that. And so really, you know, if you post earlier, you could generate the most traffic. So let's get those videos up. Uh, share those link in the links in the Think Tank webinar channel. Uh, we'd love for the group to see them. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. No, thank you all the new people. I see Riaz is here too. We have a lot of, okay, everyone's saying yes. Is anyone going to say no? That means that Devin is going to hold you accountable, right? Or Andrew's yeah. going to hold you accountable to make sure that you guys are doing this stuff because we're here for you. If you're not putting time, you know, no one should care more about your agency than you, right? We're here for you. But if you don't take the action, then, you know, it'll just be one of those things. This is a great opportunity for you guys. Awesome. So well, that's great. Thanks again for your time, Dennis. Uh, very insightful as always. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll be posting, you know, the recording and the and the materials from this session as always in the Think Tank channel. And I hope everyone has a safe and uh, fantastic weekend and week next week. And we'll catch up with everyone uh, next Friday. So get those posts up, post those links in the in the channel. And whoever gets the most engagement is going to win something again next week. Because rock. Andrew, thanks for organizing it. And if you want to win, just boost that post for a dollar a day. Because the odds are most people win a dollar a day. Easy way to get engagement. Don't take my strategy. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to win. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's see if, uh, let's see if right. Mike gets it two times in a row. Don't let him get it, guys. <laughs> really nice Have a good weekend. Thanks, everybody. Glad you're here.